Hello and welcome back to the Spotlight Games Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick. Today, we're going to be talking about Gamescom, Opening Night Live, all the announcements that happened earlier today. Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario, is stepping back from the role, so we're going to talk about that and to celebrate his success with our favorite Mario games. And there's Last of Us HBO News, so of course we're going to talk about it because I am joined by friend of the show, Kayla from the JK Games Podcast, one of the biggest Last of Us fans I know. So we had to bring her by to talk about The Last of Us. Kayla, how are you? Thanks for joining. <laughs> you are so welcome. Thanks for having me on. I'm very excited to talk about this with you. You brought this to my attention. I was like, what? I have not seen this. So I'm excited to dive in. Um, but I'm doing yeah. good. Thanks good. for having how are, me. How are things in the land of JK Games? JK Games, you know, we are just trucking along. We actually just released an episode um, talking about, you know, we talked a little bit pre-show about, and we'll talk later, there's a lot of games that Ooh. came out this year and that are coming out this year. So it's so, hard to kind of like discern, like, what am I going to play? Obviously, we don't have time for every single game right now. So where do we yeah. start? So we, me and Jerrica on our last episode, um, she was not able to join today, unfortunately. She's in our hearts. In our um, hearts and minds. <laughs> in our souls, thoughts and prayers. <laughs> um, but she she will, um, we were kind of talking about, do we want two big games that just came out uh, and is coming out that we're going to talk about later. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 or Starfield. Oh. What should we play? What should we do? What um, did you just say? Yeah, no. Uh, well, <laughs> you have to tune in to find out. No, you know, you're right. Uh, no, that's unfair. Clickbait. I should just go listen to the episode. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, basically both. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Basically no, both. I yeah, I agree. Um, well, as you mentioned, we have a lot of video game stuff to talk about because this is the Spotlight Games podcast where each week we spotlight the latest and the greatest in the world of video games. You can get it by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Spotlight Games Pod or by searching for Spotlight Games in your favorite podcast app. And hey, you can be on the show by tuning in as we record live Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time on twitch.tv slash Spotlight Games Pod. So be sure to follow us there so that you're notified when we go live so you can be part of the conversation. Kayla, this is normally when I throw it to Cayman to ask what he's playing, what he's doing, but he's dead. Uh, he <gasps> died in a, a, a tragic. Harvey. He was abducted by aliens and, and we have confirmation of death. Uh, oh, so no. he, is, he is not here with us this week, but he will be back next week. Um, OK, that's good. But so, Kayla, tell me, what what have <laughs> you been playing? That is a great question. So um, I. Just recently finished, shocker, <gasps> finished <laughs> two games. Uh, I know that both of these games, I think you have played um, and maybe have talked about on the show, if I am correct. Uh, I just finished playing Venba, oh, which great game. was a super fun time. And then I also just finished playing um, Star Wars Jedi Survivor nice. as well. I did. Jedi um, Survivor. I tell then, you what, what a what a shame that that game came out this year because it's so good and like yeah. we all forgot about it. Yeah, and I do think that like there, you know, there was some complications upon release with some of the graphics. Personally, for me, like it didn't necessarily hinder my experience that much graphically. Sure. Um, there are a couple notes that I have about I, I do I did really love it, and I'm a big yeah. Star Wars fan. Mm -hmm. um i do think i enjoyed the first one a little bit more that was be gonna honest. be my next question yeah yeah i think what, I enjoyed what, what it a about little it more and i can think? elaborate yeah please do okay so um i would say for me and this is no spoilers spoiler free um i i enjoyed the gameplay better of this one i do think there was a couple of cool additions like um, some more stances that you get, a couple things that you can do. Mm -hmm. I think the skill tree, this is kind of a side thing. The skill tree looked really cool uh, mm -hmm. in this game. It's a little bit different. A couple different, you know, upgrade options, things like that. I do think the story itself, I enjoyed more in the first one. I think it had a little bit more wow value um, sure. in the first one. There were some choices uh, made that I thought were really cool in this one. And if mm -hmm. you played, I'm sure you know, like what I'm alluding to. Mm hmm um that i did enjoy the villain felt a little bit flat for me um right. just you know just felt a little bit flat i think it could have been done a little bit better um but overall i i liked it i enjoyed yeah. it i just think that um i think there were some things that could have been made a little bit better and i think narratively i enjoyed the first one better for sure do you think it has any chance of being your game of this year that's that's tough. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I haven't finished a ton of games this year. I've I've doubled sure. my toes in a good bit. Um, 
the Jedi Fallen Order was my game of the year it came out. I think yeah. that was 2019 or 2020. I think so. I think 19. One of those. Let's see. Uh, it was my game of the year when it came out. So I don't know. I don't. I don't think so for me. How do you feel? Do you feel like it's in the running for you? So the, I mean, so I have uh, Jedi Survivor. I keep there's this app called GG. Um, it's like Letterbox if you know Letterbox for movies, but for video games. Yeah. Um, where you can oh, like track what you're playing this. and what you have played. You can rank them. You can put reviews if you want. I don't do that. I tried for like a week and I was like, I just don't like writing reviews. Um, and so, I mean, I do have it <laughs> as number two. <laughs> well, right. I like talking, but I don't like writing reviews. Um, yeah. That's I, so right now it is my number two in terms of games I've played and okay. finished this year. Um Behind Zelda, which I mean has no chance of being uh, of surpassing Zelda for me as as game of the year, and I only see as I look at the list of games coming out later this year, I feel like there's at least two or three games that could either overtake Zelda or at the very least overtake Jedi Survivor as my number two so far okay. this year. So yeah, I don't I don't think it, it'll get some love at our uh, end of the year show when we give out our coveted golden beefy awards, but um, I don't think it's oh, going to be my game of the year. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah. I was just curious how your stance was on it. Um, but sure. yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I don't want it to sound like I'm, you know, like hating on it because I'm not, but you know, like I just, I feel like as, as like a pretty big Star Wars fan, I would say like it, it did, there was some things I wish that could have been a little bit different, but you're right. Sure. It did kind of get lost in the sauce with all the, all the a games little bit. come out. So yeah, I forget. Um, there, I forget what, what came out. I think it was. It might have been right before Zelda. I forget right now. But there was something else big that came out right after it released, and I feel like that kind of stole its spotlight a little bit. Um, and and I feel like it's I think just it not was Zelda. I think it was Zelda. I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, but yeah, um, so and then also. Bimba, uh, to Yes. Oh my goodness. Vimba, let's kind of swing totally uh, opposite direction. <laughs> um, I talked about it on our last episode of JK Games too, but I absolutely loved this game. I think it was the perfect length. It was short Same. and sweet and to the point. Um, I loved, it was a little bit tricky. There were some things like, but I do, I do think that like the narrative was phenomenal. I'm a, um, something I didn't talk about. If you guys have seen me on here before, I love books too. I love to read. Mm -hmm. um, I think the narrative of the the because you know it's essentially just like a like a like a story that you're kind of playing through, but then options for like you know when you're doing your cooking and things like that, I think are really great. Um, one of the things that I love about video games is being able to play through like the perspective of somebody that you know isn't like you and that like you don't mm -hmm. have that perspective from, and you can get that kind of like experience and um, really like see the journey of this family. I thought it was really cool. Um, it was sad. I cried sad. a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. just a little bit of tears. Um, but I really liked the actual like gameplay mechanics too, like having to yeah. figure out the recipes and make it work and um, food that I've never tried before, food I've never oh. like had before. And I was like, you know what? I think I could make some of this, you know? You should. Like <laughs> it, it's all so good. I learned to love but, uh, Indian food because of my wife. She, she grew up eating a ton of Indian food and I just, I never had it until I was an adult and, I yeah. any food is so good. I have had but like you, you know, there's some some that I've had here and there, but not um nothing that they would talk about in the game. So um it was a great experience. I think it was a great game. Um it took me about I would say like not even two hours, I would yeah. say. Mm -hmm. like, a, like not not too long. I played it in two sittings. Um but yeah, ten out of ten. I thought it was fantastic. So I good. And yeah, then, I that's that's in my top five so far this year. I loved it. Yeah. So much. yeah. I love the art style. The music was phenomenal. Like mm -hmm. I thought every, all the elements I loved. Um, and then the current play that I'm doing right now, and this is just, um, I'm a really big fan of like, um, like sim, like management, like city builder style games, especially like cozy, like chill ones. That's kind of what I'm in the mood for right now. Um, have you heard of Fable Dome? You, you know, that? I'm looking it up right now. I don't think I have, or if I have, I've forgotten about it. I like its art style though. Yeah, it came out. Um, it's kind of like a medieval style, like city builder management type game. Yeah. Um, very relaxing. It's in early access technically. Um, gotcha. They had like a demo that you could play earlier this year that came out and I put for free. I think maybe you can still play the demo. Actually, I'm not 100% sure. Um, it's on Steam. 
I don't, I'll be honest, I don't know where else it's at. This would be a great Switch game if it's not already on Switch. Yeah, let's see. Um, but it is made by um, Grinna Games, is the developer, and the publisher is Dear Villagers. Um, it came out in April. But yeah, it's uh, it's really great. You basically just kick back, relax, and chill. And um, you do have, like, there are check, like, goals, um, like, kind of that you can get to. But you have these villagers, you have this town. Um, there is like a, a little bit of a story. I'll be honest, it's not the main like kind of point. You're just kind of sandbox style. Um, mm -hmm, but there mm -hmm. is like the objectives I was mentioning. But yeah, you have your villagers. They can all have different jobs. You build these buildings. Um, they do have like some like city skyline slash sim city elements where like you have to like run like water. There's not power because it's oh, like interesting times. Sure. Uh, but yeah, it's really cool. It's very much if you want a game to just sit back and chill. I think it's like fifteen dollars on Steam, I believe. Yeah, it looks like um, it, it is only PC by the by the look of it. Gotcha. On the Boo! Yeah. Wish it was options for more, but it is a very small. From Switch. what I understand, yeah, it's a small like publisher. From what I understand, so um, yeah, it, I think it was on Kickstarter originally, I believe. Oh, cool. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm playing right now. In between nice. some of the like you know, more intense games we're going to get to eventually. Like, I do sure. want to start Final Fantasy. I know that it seems like that's what you're playing right now. Yeah, um, one or of one them. of the things you're playing. Mm -hmm. So I played the demo and I want to like actually dive into the game like soon. Yeah, it's, I, it's, um, it's so big. So yeah, so I've been, um, I've gotten back into Final Fantasy 16. I've, if you've been listening the last few weeks, I've been having a, a bit of a love-hate relationship with that game. Like I really ah. want to like it, but I've been having a lot of trouble really getting into it like mm -hmm. i was thinking about this last night i think i'm pretty close to finishing it um i okay. have played about 45 to 50 hours um and when i look at like a level walkthrough or a chapter walkthrough on like ign i'm about four fifths of the way through their like mission okay. list so i think I'm, I'm approaching kind of the final act and I haven't finished it, so I don't want to like necessarily give like a full review by any means. Right. But I think what I've decided as of right now, objectively, I think this is a great game. But my opinion, I don't think it's very good. Like it doesn't, oh, it, it doesn't fair. quite work for me. And I, that might sound dissonant, but I, like I can, I can objectively say the battle system is great, really fun. I understand like it's it's really well built. It runs really well. Uh, the graphics are great. The it's like the story isn't working for me, but I I could see why someone would oh, really okay. like the story. Like it's just my opinion of it. I, not loving it, but I think it is a very good game and I think it is worth playing if you are interested in it because it might work for mm -hmm. you better than it's working for me. And I'm hoping that the last act of the story will really bring me in and change my mind. Um, <laughs> but it's just, it's just not quite working for me. And I, I, I think I've, I've finally accepted that I, uh, I just, I kind of miss the older feeling final fantasy game, the, the turn-based mm -hmm. RPG, like traditional compared mm -hmm. to the very actiony, um, like the remake, like seven, uh, the very like gotcha. action focused gameplay. It's it's fun. I just doesn't do it for me uh, as much as it's doing for a lot of people. Like I, it, yeah, it seems like I'm I was gonna in, in the minority of that opinion. I was gonna ask what your relationship like elevator pitch because I know this could be a whole thing uh, sure, about sure. what your relationship with Final Fantasy is. So I've played a handful of them. Like I played mm. um, the very first one I think I ever played was nine on the PlayStation One. Um, okay. But I played it on the PlayStation Vita, not on the one. Um, oh, and I, so I, I played Vita. nine. Oh, God, what a great system. I played nine, <laughs> ten, the seven remake, ten, two, part of 15, but I didn't like 15. I never played 14, uh, the MMO. Um, I played 13, I think two of the three parts of 13. So like, I've played a fair okay, amount. Okay, so a decent them. amount, decent amount. Um, yeah, and, I, and I've and i played a ton of, of JRPGs in general, like, you know, Persona and and those kinds of games. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think I, I think I prefer the kind of more traditional feel for final fantasy, um, but okay. Good to know. waiting on my final judgment until I finish the game, but I am going to see it through. Like I, I will say, even though it, I sound very down on it, 
I'm higher on it than I was last time I spoke about it. Like I'm actually to the point now where I'm like, okay. I do want to, I do want to kind of continue and see this through. Um, Cause it, for, it was a slog for me for a while. So I, I've improved a little bit uh, on that. That's good. Um, hey, yeah. Hey, everybody, everybody. I, um, I have never played a final fantasy game ever. Okay. Uh, so this was my first dipping of my toe in. And so it is interesting to hear that I, that it is different uh, and, you know, I have seen gameplay, you know, we sure. had a whole like in-depth thing of Final Fantasy on our episode where um, one of our friends that has played all of them, like talked about it. Uh, but I enjoyed the demo. That's all I've played yeah. the first like two hours or so. Um, yeah. And that's what's but, so yeah, weird okay. to me is I loved the demo. I was so excited to mm -hmm. play this game because Rotan. I had such a good time in the demo. But I think for me, ultimately, it's been the story for me. Like I've, I've been having trouble gotcha. connecting to the story and caring uh, and I think that's why I'm having such trouble with it. Um, mm -hmm. But then I've also, so since we last recorded, I played and finished Dredge, which I think is a game Ooh. Jerrica has talked about on your guys' podcast. Yeah, um, she's been interested Loved in Dredge. Loved Dredge. Okay. I played it on my Steam Deck. The general premise, um, for those of you listening that don't know, you are uh, a sailor. You're a, a captain of a little boat, and you're in this like seaside town. Um and there's like a bit of a mystery happening because you kind of don't re seem to remember your past. Um, and you're going out on the waters and you're fishing and uh, you're kind of doing these little missions for people. Um, and when it gets dark, when it's nighttime, there are monsters out there. Uh, and there's a, a bit of a mm. like a Cthulhu situation, a bit of a, a spooky situation. Um, I enjoyed okay, it. I'm I, interested. Uh, yeah, I... It, when I talked a few weeks ago about Dave the Diver, it, it reminded me a little bit of Dave the Diver in that there's like two kind of parts of the game. There's like the I'm fishing part of the game. And then there's the like upgrading your boat and like going around to these towns mm -hmm. and like uh, uh, upgrading stuff and like doing missions for people. Um, it's not quite separated like dave the diver was where it's like you're going fishing uh by scuba diving and then you're running a sushi restaurant like very it's not that kind of disparate um but it reminded me of that in a way with the the fishing side of it but i, I really liked it it's on i think it's on everything like it's definitely on on um switch because sid okay, yeah. has she played it on switch he talked about that last week um but i really nice. liked it i think it's like 15 or 20 bucks um okay. give it a watch about how long see if yeah, uh, I think I probably put like eight to ten hours into it, maybe a little okay. bit more than that, but not much more than that. Um, it's oh, not a huge interested. Game, yeah, it looks really. Good. I like the the art looks really good. Art was really good, and like it, it, there's not a ton of story to it, but there's enough that I really wanted to figure out what was happening. Like there is there is a bit of a mystery uh, to it, and I I really yeah, wanted to know kind of what the mystery was. Um, okay. So yeah, I, I I liked it, and then finally, and, and this will be a quick one. Um, we'll probably talk a lot more next week when Cayman's back because this is a Cayman game. But I've been playing <laughs> uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, um, oh. which just came out last Friday. Uh, I played a couple games on Sunday, and then I played last night with them, um, with Cayman and and the the DBD crew that he always runs with. Nice. Um, and it's fun. It's a lot of fun. I, it's not my kind of game, um, mm -hmm. because it is, it's a multiplayer game, the way it works. Um, it's competitive. You have a few people on the side of the family from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So Leatherface with mm -hmm. the chainsaw, uh, and the other characters, I don't remember who they are, um, but they all have like different powers and different abilities and different skill sets. And then you have the victim. So you like wake up in the basement of whatever map you're in as a victim mm -hmm. and you're essentially trying to escape uh, like they do in the movie. Yeah. Um, it sounds like Dead by Daylight, very similar. It's, it, it, it is. Um, it, from what they say, it seems to be a, a good bit different in a lot of ways. Okay. Um, in that there's like multiple different ways to win as victims. And it's since like, there's, there's two teams. It's not like just the killer versus the survivors. Um, like it can be three on, oh. I actually don't know what the max is, but I think you can have a max of three on the family side. Um, and at least four on the victim side. The most we ever had was four. Maybe you can okay. have more, but I'm, I'm not totally sure. Um, but it's fun. fun. It's, it's. There are some frustrating things to it that I experienced, but I think that's mm -hmm. just by design. And I think I'm supposed to be frustrated by it, which sounds <laughs> uh, 
like at first you hear that and it's like, oh, well, that doesn't sound very good. But it, like things that frustrate me, there's like no map. There's no, but it's like, you're supposed to feel disoriented. You're supposed to feel like you don't know where to go because you're a victim of these people trying to kill you. And, uh, and so like, I understand why they do it, but I just, I do wish there was a map. Um, but it's fun. I'm, I'm definitely going to be playing more and I know Cayman's going to be playing more and he'll, he'll have, um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it next week, but if you have Xbox, it's on game pass. So, uh, free to download if you, mm. if you're a game pass subscriber. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's what I've been playing. Do you, are you into, to that kind of, I, I hear your dog and it's, that's okay. Are you into that kind of, hey, game, I'm like sorry. DVD she's, or... she's having a time. That's, that's okay. Uh, yeah. uh, do you like those games? Yes, I do. Um, I, I experience similar frustrations to, to you. Like I'm normally a pretty like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like I'm normally a pretty strategic kind of like player. I love a good strategy. Sure. So like you would think some of that, some of that does appeal to me like, oh, going in, especially with friends, like that's not really the kind of game I would just pick up to pick up. Like I would pick it up with friends. Yeah. Um, but I tried to buy daylight. It's just, there's so many people that are so good at it. Yeah, that it's it's when you queue up with people, it's like, I'm just dead over and over again. Like, um, mm -hmm. but I love horror. I love like horror movies and I like uh, just the horror genre, especially like classic horror. So yeah, uh, I think I'm going to pick it up just to try it out. I wonder, is it on, I wonder if it's on PC game pass as well. Um, so. I bet it is, but let's see. Uh, Texas. Oh, oh my goodness. PC game pass. That, that, your dog wants to be on the show. And I she's I, like, hello. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> um at a quick glance, it's hard to confirm whether it's also on PC Game Pass, but it might be. Um I would I before watch. you buy it on PC, I would look to see if it's on PC Game Pass. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that's what we've been playing. Let us know what you've been playing. If you're playing Texas Chance of Massacre, I see uh Terry in the chat. Glad to hear some hands-on for Texas Chance of Massacre. We'll have more next week. Um, but if if you like that game style, I bet you'll like this game. Um, because you know, I, I had fun. Um <laughs> Aravi, Kayla's dog sounds vicious. I don't know if yeah, you know Aravi, she's... but yeah. <laughs> Watch Aravi out. knows my dog is not vicious. Okay. Okay. She's just, you know, <laughs> she's expressing her feelings. Okay. We, we support Which that in this house. We all should be able to whenever we feel like we need to. Um, let's go into the first <laughs> story of today. Gamescom opening night live was today. There was a whole two hour show, which we're not going to cover all of it because we would be here for a long time. Um, but there are some highlights. Um, over in Germany, Gamescom is the biggest uh, video game conference in the world. It has like over 100,000 people attend. Um, and Jeff Keighley, who you might know from the Game Awards, um, has a show every year that is like a light press conference. They don't we they don't normally bring the big hits, but they do normally bring some cool stuff. Um, so I wanted mm -hmm. to talk about a few of those uh, here today. So they started the show uh, mm -hmm. with a tease of Starfield. Um, they first brought out the composer to play a little bit of music from the game. And then Todd Howard, um, who is the overlord over there at Bethesda, came on stage and they shared a live action teaser for the game and spoke a little bit about the story. And I tell you what, Kayla, I am so excited for Starfield. Are you, do you Me have the Starfield too. bug? Yeah. Yes, I have been bitten by the Starfield bug. I, I think that's kind of what I'm waiting for. I, you know, I, I kind of mentioned earlier how we talked about like, uh, you know, what's really hot right now is Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Um, I, I'm kind of just like waiting. I, I don't really want to get stuck in anything before like Starfield comes out. Yeah. I know we have a little bit to go, but, um, I'm really looking forward to it. I Elder Scrolls and like specifically Skyrim is, uh, something I sunk so many hours into, mm -hmm. um, in my life. So I, and I also enjoyed the Fallout games as well. So I, everything I've seen looks great. I'm really hoping that it, it, um, lives up to my hopes. I'll say that yeah. I, from what we saw, especially like today, I took a look at the footage from today. It looks like it's going to be really fun. I think it's yeah. something that will be a really great game to around like the end of the year and probably what I'll spend the rest of my time. On. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, yes. I just really hope it works. Like I came in has been, has been yeah. very kind of loud with his opinion. And I think rightfully so, like he thinks it's going to launch busted. And I think there is absolutely uh, a world yeah, in which that possible. happens. I just really hope that it doesn't, um, especially yeah, that's how as feel. an Xbox series X, oh, sorry, Xbox series S owner. So I'm going to have, Mm -hmm. the least powerful thing that you can play this game on. So I'm, I'm a little concerned that it might not be able to handle yeah. it super well, but, but we'll see. But, you know, I'm, I'm very excited for Starfield. Um, 
We also got a look, I think our first look at Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Yeah. We got a gameplay trailer. Uh, they showed the first level of the game. They confirmed zombies are coming to the multiplayer mode. Um, and that the campaign is going to be sending players to Verdansk, which is the setting of the original Warzone. Uh, Kayla, you're a Call of Duty fan, right? I am, yes. And I, I don't know if you noticed, but I was very excited to hear that zombies are back. Yes. Um, because that is very nostalgic for me. Um, the first sure. Black Ops game was like me, my, um, I have a younger brother and my dad would all just like play like split screen uh, zombie rounds together. And yeah. I have, got pretty good at it, actually. I was surprised myself as I was young when it came out. Um, but yeah, no, I'm a good, I'm a Call of Duty fan. I will say I, I am not like a, I'm not one of those people that's like, it's the best game ever like every year it's like game of the year no like i yeah. mean they're good and you know there's been some questionable choices over the years i'm like okay like it's kind of the <laughs> sure. same like regurgitation of you know like kind of the same thing but um this looks good i will say they always look really great um i will say the last i haven't finished a call of duty game in a while i'll be honest yeah. in terms of like um, the single player I really, side of it yes um in, is in terms of the campaign yeah. Um, I also I finished cold. I'm looking up at my I have some of them above my desk. Um, cold War was the last. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been a while since Cold War came out, but I actually really enjoyed that one. Um, I finished that story and it was really good. Um, but I, I would say majority of my experiences with it are nostalgic, like for some of the like a little bit older games um, playing them then. But this looks good. I watched what they showed. Um, I'm interested. I will more than likely get it. I think it comes out, what, November? Um, November. Did I write it down? I didn't. Uh, November. It's November something. Maybe 10th? November something. You know? Yeah. Uh, so I'll probably play it. You know? Yeah. I think it looks good. What about you? How do you feel about it? So I, if it makes you feel better, the last Call of Duty game I finished the campaign of was Modern Warfare 2 when it originally released in 2009. <laughs> uh, wow, so yeah, I, it's been a while. It's been a long time. I, growing up, like in high school, I, I liked Call of Duty casually then. Um, I didn't, I played like online a bit, but I've just never been a huge online multiplayer mm -hmm. guy. And, um, yeah. and I liked the campaigns back then, but I, I did, I kind of definitely agree with you. Like it, it felt like there were a few that I like either rented from like Gamefly, if, if that even is still a thing, um, to, to play through the campaigns. And I just never finished them. Um, mm -hmm. So it's one of those things where like, I bet there will be a Call of Duty in the next 10 years that interests me enough to get it and play it. And I'll probably have a great time. I just, it kind of has like the Madden effect or the FIFA effect for me where like, oh yeah, the games are fun. I just played so much of it as a kid that like, I kind of don't need it anymore to a yeah. degree, but if it's in front of me, I'll play it and I'll probably have a great time. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Unless it's something like super innovative, like, Oh, there's this new, like right. majority of the time it's the same game. And I do really like online multiplayer games. That's like my wheelhouse. Um, so that's part of the reason why I see the appeal. Yeah. Um, fun fact though, the, I really didn't like Warzone. Um, really? I know a lot of people really love it um, and enjoy it. I, I think it's too big. I think mm. the map is too big. Uh, too many players, but I can that see really the like that's a huge. I, I've I've not I've played my fair share of uh, battle royales because Warzone's a battle royale, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, and map size really I feel like is like the the key factor in those games. It is as someone yeah. who very very casually plays them. If it's too mm -hmm. big, I get I no no thanks. Yeah, I, I just think that, like the whenever you see like the rarity in which maybe I'm just maybe it's the way I play it. I don't know. But the map is pretty big. I'll be like, oh, there's a person. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Because you know? like it's it's pretty like you don't you know no, most of the time. And I what I love about battle royale is I love just you know my friends will say I like to just run straight into battle and just like go crazy. I like cl <laughs> close combat. Like sure. Warzone is very much more like um like long distance sniper-esque which is not normally gotcha. the way that i play them so interesting uh, okay. yeah i'm excited for it it'll be cool. it'll be it'll be good we'll see i don't know let's see um we also got um a bit of a tease for diablo season four coming october 17th 
there's like some vampire shit happening. Um, Mortal Kombat <laughs> 1 uh, revealed two new fighters. You know, Mortal Kombat 1 is a game that I've been pretty critical on on this show. Same thing with Call of Duty. Like I used to play a lot of Mortal Kombat and I just was like, they all feel the same to me. But like when it was mm-hmm. first released, I was like, this just doesn't look like visually. I thought it looked bad. But every trailer I see, I'm more impressed with how good it looks. And I'm very surprised that I kind of want to play Mortal Kombat 1. And I'm like very ah. much not a fighting game guy. Like I've... Me neither. Like at all. It is probably my least favorite genre second to like... Interesting. Car simulation games. Like Gran Turismo <laughs> type games. I just yeah. don't... Because a fighting game is is the epitome of like multiplayer combat like you the whole yeah. point is like ju- all you're doing is killing each other and like that can be fun <laughs> but like normally it's just not my vibe um but yeah something about i don't know what it is but i'm getting more and more interested in Mortal Kombat one i don't know that i'm gonna play it okay because of how many games are coming out but i'm interested i'm more interested than okay, i thought yeah. i would be um we also got a look at assassin's creed mirage which i'm excited for um Ooh, and i don't yeah, remember yeah. if we said this last week on the show but that has been moved up to October 5th. So it's coming out earlier than it uh, originally was supposed Interesting. to. Interesting. Which, which a... is like, when you look at the calendar, that was pushed up. Alan Wake 2 was pushed back, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So like, all of a sudden, things kind of like have a little bit more space in October, which feels good. Um, yeah. You know, Spider-Man got pushed back uh, like a week too. Did it? That's interesting. It did. Yeah. We talked about that on last week's episode. It got pushed back about like seven days not very much oh that's right um, that's right it, i think it's it, it was or let me see was it the 13th and now it's the 20th or is it no longer the 20th uh i think it's it was the 13th and now it's the 20th they actually uh, released a statement um and said because there are so many games coming out hell yeah that they wanted there them. to be some more space and i thought that was really cool because like i you know jerica brought it up and i was like oh yeah maybe they're just trying to like polish some things up and she was like no actually they at least their statement you know they could yeah. be it could be something else and they can just be saying that. Um, uh, Terry in the chat. I don't know if I'm going to pick up AC Mirage. Don't quite know how to feel about it yet. I, I, I see what you mean. Like I see why you think that. Um, And I, I think for me, what I'm most excited about Assassin's Creed has always been one of my favorite franchises, but the last few have just been too fucking big to the point where like it it sucks the fun out of them for me. Like I have so much fun and then I'm like, Oh wow. I still have another hundred hours. Bye. And this one, they've like very yeah. much from the beginning been like, it's going to be a shorter experience. It's only 50 bucks. So like they're they're kind of giving it a price tag of a shorter game too, mm-hmm. which I'm interested to see if they continue doing in the future. But um, so that's why I'm in. Like I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that this goes back to like the roots of Assassin's Creed. However, if reviews start coming out and it doesn't sound good, I will probably wait uh, to play it down the line. Yeah. Uh, or maybe I won't um let's see let's skip it, around here it is october bit. 20th by the way i just thank it you up. thank you yeah, you're welcome <laughs> um sonic superstars got a release date of october 17th that game is going to be dead on arrival since it comes out yeah. three days before the new mario game um yeah here's one that looked Ooh. interesting untitled goose game that the developers of that game i don't know if you saw this thank goodness you're here is their new game uh they showed it it's like really hard to describe other than it looks like a game made by the people who made Untitled Goose Game, and it looks <laughs> it, it looks cool. I'm I'm gonna pull up some um, some B-roll real quick, um, but it looks really really kind of strange. And and I'm it all, does. I'm, I'm looking at it too. Wow. Um, like a really different art style. It almost looks like something from like not even Adult Swim. I don't know how to how to categorize it, but it looks oh, weird. Um, I don't it looks understand. Like regular show. Ooh, yeah, it does. Uh, like, uh, it does. Yeah, that's kind of how it looks. Yeah, so that I'm I'm interested to see more of that. Uh, it looks really weird, and and I'm interested. Um, we also <laughs> got. Uh, let me pull up B roll again. Little Nightmares Three was announced, uh, and it's being made by a new team, actually, super massive, who you might know from The Quarry last year or yeah. Until Dawn several years ago. Um, they are, I guess, taking over this sequel. And it's, uh, Kayla, has previous Little Nightmares installments had co-op or is co-op new to this one? Do you know? Co-op is new. From what so I understand, this, I... Yeah, so this game has co-op. I didn't play the second one. 
Okay. I didn't play the second one, but I want to. Um, I only played the first one fairly recently in the last like year. Um, it's adorable. I love it. And it's like the adorable, creepy like vibe, which I really sure. enjoy. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't believe that the I know that one did not have co-op. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. believe that two did, so that would be new. This definitely seems like a good game to play co-op for sure. Yeah, it seemed um, from 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 the announcement, it seemed like co-op was news, but since yeah. I didn't play them, I'm not I wasn't sure if if that was yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. a totally new thing. Um good. we also uh we can have a moment of silence for Cayman, who's no longer with us. Uh, Bulletstorm <laughs> VR was announced. I actually, I texted him. Uh, I texted him and said, maybe they'll announce a Bulletstorm reboot and that'll be the biggest announcement of the year for you. And <laughs> like, as a joke, I was like, there's no way we're going to get anything Bulletstorm here. Like total just joke. And then. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you manifested it. I manifested it apparently, but it's a VR uh, version of, I guess, the original game. I'm I'm a little unclear on that part, but um, I texted it to him, and he said, "This is the worst news I've gotten all year." <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> thoughts and prayers with Cayman. Uh, I'm sure he'll come on next week to yell about it. But um, Bulletstorm VR coming December 14th to all the VR platforms. Um, nice. And then last two things, unless there's anything that I'm skipping that you also want to discuss, um, Marvel Snap, a game that I'm still playing every day, is on Steam now. It was released today. Um, and then Alan Wake nice. 2 ended the show. And yeah. I tell you what, Kayla, are you in, uh, excited for this game at all? I am. And I hate to say that, unfortunately, I haven't played the first game yet. Um, but I've heard it's... I. Jerica let me know. She was like, you know, you can watch like some stuff on the first game. You don't necessarily yeah. like, she's like, oh, you can just watch like a summary. Um, I'm very interested. It definitely seems very like psychological like mm -hmm. style and anything to do with like psychological and like dream like type esque, mm -hmm. um, like, you know, suspense sort of thing. And like, is it intended to be horror or is it, it is. more like just. Okay, okay. It is. So in the first yeah, game, it, it was like light horror. It was more like thrillery, but they've said this one okay. specifically is survival horror. Uh, with oh, this perfect. Sequel. I love that. Um, yeah. Yeah, they said, um, so Sam I Lake, mean, the, the, I don't know, president of, of the studio, whatever his role is, um, which he's actually, <laughs> he's in that trailer. He's he, I think he's playing a character in the game. Um, said gotcha. that, so this trailer was the first time we saw gameplay from Alan's perspective in the sequel because there's two, you can play as two characters at any point in the game apparently. Um, and they talked about, um, there's this new uh, reality within this game called The Dark Place that is within Alan's Ooh. own mind that he's trapped in and has been trapped <gasps> in for the last 13 years. Um, and and also you might notice from the trailer, there's like live action acting happening. Like there's, yeah. it's not just animated. And apparently they're similar to um, their game a few years ago, Quantic Break. Um, their, and Control had a little bit of live action stuff in it too. Loved um, Control. It loved Control. It seems like, the there's a lot of live action stuff gonna that's gonna be weaved in to the dark place it sounds like specifically um gotcha. so yeah i'm i'm so hyped for this game like i i am even more excited for alan wake 2 than i am for starfield or spider-man 2 Ooh, like i okay i think it looks so uh -huh. good and we haven't got a really really good new horror game in a long time i think in my opinion I agree. Like we got, I would agree. We got Resident Evil 4 earlier this year and Dead Space, like those remakes, which were great. But this, I'm, yeah, I'm, and Control was like a masterpiece. So I'm so excited for, for Alan Wake 2. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, October 27th, new release date that is no longer coming on the 17th. Uh, it is the 27th. So a week after Spider-Man <laughs> and Mario Wonder. Um, Did all of these developers just like get together in a room and be like, okay, like I think you, so. you go here, I go here, and then I'll go here, and then we'll all just be happy. Perfect. I think Love so. That. I think that's exactly what happened because <laughs> things have been moving in various directions, and it feels like there's there might be time for most of these games now. Um, so you're saying there's a chance. Through all of them. You're saying there's a chance. Exactly. Uh, Kayla, <laughs> before we move on, is there anything else from today's show that I didn't mention that you would like to talk about? Because there was a lot more stuff no. that was announced, but we just don't have the time. 
I think that we touched on everything that I'm most excited for. I, basically, everything we've touched on, I am I am hyped for. I think that um, most of all, the like, standouts for me, I am hopeful that Starfield is good. I'm excited for that. Hopefully, turns out the hype level's there for me. And then Little Nightmares 3. I, I just yeah. added... Um, I gotta. I'm think I'm gonna move it up on my priority list to play the second one. They didn't. Did they give a release date for three or no? Doesn't look like it. Um, if they did, I didn't write it down. It's fine. I don't think. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. Uh, Yeah, that's exciting. Um, something to put on my radar for later. But no, I think we touched on everything. Um, more than I thought was going to be talked about for sure. Yeah, they didn't announce a date, but they did announce. As of tonight, there's going to be a six episode podcast, and the first two episodes have been released. Something it's going to be tied into the game in some capacity. I don't oh, know how, cool. but depending on how much you like Little Nightmares lore, there is a podcast out. Uh, if that's there your is vibe. some interesting lore. Uh, it, I mean, it looks sure. like it. There's some creepy characters in that. <laughs> Last quick thing, actually, I didn't mention just because there, I don't know what to say other than it looks really cool. But Crimson Desert was a game that was shown off today. I don't remember if it's a game that we've seen before, but it looks like Tears of the Kingdom if it had like a medieval realistic aesthetic instead of like a cartoony vibe. Um, And like to a shocking degree, like flying from the sky, things up in the sky, like in Mm. Tears of the Kingdom. But it looks really, really cool. So if if. Anything like that interests you, go look at that trailer later after you listen to this uh, because it looks really cool. But there's no date for it. So, like, who knows when that's coming? Yeah. Um, it's in the ether somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere, some way we will play that game. Uh, but not <laughs> today. 